Hello, welcome. My iX1 has uh, all available options that you can have in Sweden. So I put together this video to present the options. I also include some uh, tips about how to use them and some settings. So this can hopefully help you decide which options you want to have or not want to have. And this is of course valid for the Swedish market, so it will surely be different in your country. And all the options are also the same for the normal X1. So enjoy! First of all, I have the M Sport package, which uh, includes a different design of the front bumper and also the rear of the car. And uh, I must say it makes the car look totally different from the normal or the X-Line. But of course it's a matter of personal taste. Also I've gone for the extended shadow line, which includes the black grille on the car. Included in the M Sport package is uh, also the normal shadow line, which includes uh, the black uh, frames around the windows. The color is uh, frozen pure grey. And uh, there's a lot of discussion about that uh, the frozen paint is very hard to maintain and it's uh, a very problematic color to own. But um, we'll see. I don't think so. Uh, actually, it hides scratches and everything very well uh, in opposite to a normal high gloss paint. And uh, stone chips is easily fixed also on this one. The only problem is if you get uh, bigger damage and you have to repaint some area of the car, it's a little bit more tricky. But that is uh, also the case with the normal paint, I think. And uh, anyhow, I think the car looks amazing in this color, so I wouldn't trade it for a high gloss one. It really shows all the lines in the cars. Also, I've gone for the 20 inch wheels, which of course impacts the consumption. But again, they look great, I think. And uh, I have um, Hakapelita uh, high friction Nordic tires on the winter on them, and, and then I changed to different tires in the summer. Also, I have gone for the uh, tinted glass at the back of the car, the rear windows, and also on the glass of the trunk of the car. I also have uh, chosen the black roof rails and uh, if you don't specify them you don't get any roof rails at all, at least in Sweden. Uh, I think it's different, I think they are standard on the normal X1 but on the iX1 you have to specify them in black or aluminium. Included in the M Sport package is also the sport seats and uh, they come as standard with Alcantara leather which I think first of all it looks great and uh, the chairs give you a really good support and you can also choose leather if you want to but I prefer the Alcantara because it's the leather is often very cold in winter and hot in the summer and you also get a better grip on the Alcantara Inside the car you also have the luxury dashboard with soft material and uh, the blue stitching. You also have the mesh effect on the trim which looks very good I must say, especially together with the aluminium part above it. 
You also get the soft material with the blue stitching on the doors. Also together with the M Sport package you get the black roof lining instead of the white one. It's a matter of personal taste but I definitely prefer the black alternative. Also included in the M Sport package is the M steering wheel which is uh, has a very good comfort. It's quite thick, which I like. And uh, this new one also has a very special design of the spokes. So all in all, I think it looks great. It feels great. And of course, with all the buttons you need on the columns. I also ordered the panoramic roof which is really big and lets in a lot of light inside the car. You can open it in two ways, either in ventilation mode or you can open it fully and then you get a lot of light and air into the car. There is also an electrical blind that you can adjust uh, as much as you want so you can keep all the light and the heat outside of the car. There is also a special function for the roof that uh, when you open the panoramic roof for ventilation mode it first opens the blind so the airflow is not uh, blocked and when you close the ventilation mode the blind closes also. When you go for the adaptive LED lights, you also get a different design of the headlights and uh, of the turn signals in the front of the cars, which uh, really enhances the look of the car, I must say. When you want to use the tow bar, you have a small switch inside the right side of the trunk. Just press it once and then the operation starts. And compared to other cars I had, this is really a fast operation. And then when you want to close it, you just push the switch again and it disappears also very fast. When you order the storage net for the luggage compartment, there are actually two different kinds included. One is the smaller one when you have the, this one, when you have the back seats in the normal position. And this can help you when you load a little bit higher back here. It's also included a bigger version for when you have the back seats folded down, then you attach it to the seats and in the roof and then you can protect the whole area. When you have the comfort access, you can also set up the car in that way that it unlocks and locks itself when you enter the car or when you leave the car, as long as you have your digital key or your normal key in your pocket together with you. So as soon as I get Close to the car, it automatically unlocks. And if I then leave the car at a certain distance, the car will lock itself. 
When you have the comfort access, you also get digital key, which means that I can lock or unlock lock the car by my phone or even my Apple Watch. So I can now lock or unlock the car by my watch. So now the car was locked. You can also, of course, open or close the car with uh, keyless access by the door handle. And um, normally I have the car set up so it uh, locks or unlocks automatically when I enter or leave the car. And this works both with the keys in my pocket or my Apple Watch or my telephone. If you have the comfort access, you can also, of course, open the trunk with the small kick below it. And I've had this on a lot of cars and uh, uh, often it doesn't work very well. But I must say on this car, it actually works really good. So all I do is a small kick and the trunk opens. Works every time in opposite to other cars I had. I also have the electrical adjustment on the front seats. Uh, whenever I choose a car I want to have this because I often want to change my driving position. I have one setting for city traffic which is normally a little bit more upright and then I have a more relaxed position for long distance driving. And if you choose this, you can have it also with memory. And then you have two different memory settings for the driver's seat. I also have the active seats, which include a lumbar support, which you of course can adjust up and down and uh, how hard or soft you want it to be. But you also have massage built in the, the chairs. So when you press the button on the lumbar support, you can set different settings for the massage, uh, the way you want it to work. Uh, you have four different types. You can set the speed and also the massage level and of course turn it off and on. And uh, if you use this after a certain amount of time, it turns uh, off the massage automatically. Also, when you use the driving mode relax, it uh, automatically starts uh, the massage function. And I have made a shortcut here, so I can turn it off and on, very simple. I also chose the wireless charging for the telephone. Uh, I have had the wireless charging in a lot of cars, but normally it's not enough space for a larger telephone like my iPhone. 14 Pro Max, but here is no problem to fit it. It also a special hatch to keep it in place and the location is very good. And uh, in order to prevent the telephone from overheating, there are actual uh, fan built in in the charging. So in the bottom there are two uh, small air vents that can uh, help the telephone from overheating. When you choose the Harman Kardon sound system, you also get a different design of the speaker grills in real aluminium with a great look. And then you have the bigger speakers in the doors and uh, the whole system sounds uh, very good I must say for the price. I have had other options in other cars. I had, for instance, an Audi e-tron GT before this car with uh, Bang Olufsen and uh, this one sounds much better than that system. You also have the same design of the speakers in the rear doors. You also have one subwoofer under each front seat. And uh, as I said before, the, the system sounds really, really good. I also have the heated steering wheel and the heated seats are standard in Sweden, but maybe not in other countries. And uh, I can set uh, the level of the steering wheel in 
several different levels and the same for the seats and uh, when I have it to automatic it can also adjust it automatically depending on the outside temperature or the temperature inside the car. If you order connected package professional you also get uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and uh, Apple CarPlay which I have displays all over the media display and it's very clear so works very well. If you have connected package professional you also get connected music with Spotify so if you don't have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay you can still access your Spotify account directly on the screen in your car and uh, switch between your different library playlists etc. I also have the interior camera system and uh, if the alarm goes off the car the camera starts recording automatically and sends the images to your phone later. And you can also start manual recording by your phone. So if you wonder if you have forgotten something in the car or what's happening you just uh, go in the BMW app and start recording and you get it sent to your telephone. You can use the parking assistant both for normal perpendicular parking and of course also for parallel parking. So when you want to activate it you press the park button in the center console and the car start to search for available spaces. And uh, as soon as you find a suitable spot you can start it by either press the set button on the steering wheel or on the center console and then you just lift your foot off the brake you don't touch the accelerator or the steering wheel or anything uh, so the car does everything for you totally automatic And then it's finished. And when you want to leave the parking place, you can also do it automatically. You just push the brake pedal to start the maneuver. And you just relax and let the car do the rest. Very simple. The parking assistant works the same way when you do perpendicular parking. So it starts to search for an available space. And as soon as it finds it, you can start reverse parking by pressing the button here or the button on the steering wheel. And then the car does everything for you. It even engages, changes from uh, reverse to forward and then it changes to reverse again to back the car into the correct position. And when it's placed in the middle of the parking space everything is completed. If you have the parking assistant professional you can get several views of the 360 degrees cameras. You have first of all you have the normal parking view where you can see a 360 degree image of the car where it's moving and you can have the front camera or when you put it in reverse you get the reverse camera. You also get guidance lines which tells you where the car will head when you turn it. 
but you also have some other views you can go into the panoramic view where you have a bigger view of the front of the car the yellow lines here are the front bumpers so it's a extremely wide angle view and uh, here you can use the activation points and I made a separate video about that so I put the link up here in the upper right corner for you and you can check that out separately then you have some more functions you have a three dimensional view of the car where you can choose different positions of the car that you want to observe and uh, this is a uh, live animated view so if I release the brake pedal the brake light goes off if I turn off the warning signal it indicates that too then you also have the trailer coupling view to help you to um, uh, mount your uh, what you want to have on your tow bar so you get an um, magnified picture of the tow bar and you can also see in what direction the, the thing you're towing going. You also have a car wash view which gives you some tracks to help you get into the car wash. It's the black lines here which indicates where your wheels will go. So in all and then you have different settings if you want the warning signals or not. So you have a good observation of your car and what it's doing. There is also a cleaning function for the rear view camera and uh, you activate it at the same time as you activate the uh, cleaning for the rear window. So if I start the uh, cleaning of the rear window you see that also the rear camera gets cleaned. The car also remembers the last couple of hundred meters you are driving when you are parking the car. So if you are parking into a tight spot somewhere, maybe in a parking garage or something like that, and uh, you want then easily to move out of the parking space, you just use the start reversing assistant on the display you put the car in reverse and then the car reverses in the exact same uh, path that you enter the parking space without doing anything so this can be very useful if you are in a tight situation where you're parked or something If you have the 360 cameras, you also have the drive recorder. So you can start it manually if you want to. And uh, then you can start recording. And it actually records 20 seconds before you trigger it and 20 seconds after. And uh, that is actually very good because if you uh, experience a crash or something, it starts recording automatically and then it has already started recorded 20 seconds before the accident happened and when you're driving in a normal way there's also a shortcut if you press the park button for a few seconds it starts recording and the same there it records 20 seconds before and 20 seconds after and then you can view the recordings in the car or you can download it to a USB memory. You can of course also show the recording in the car if you want to and it records all four cameras separately. So you can choose here which camera you want to see the recording for. And as you see, it started recording already when I was parked and uh, now it's recording while I'm driving. So it's a very good system and uh, especially useful if uh, an accident or something happens. 
I have the language set to English in my car instead of Swedish and that is because the voice commands don't work in Swedish in BMW yet. But uh, the English version works really well, so let's do a test. Hello BMW. My hands are cold. Okay. I will increase the steering wheel heating intensity by one level. Hello BMW. My hands are still cold. Sure, the steering wheel heating will be warmer shortly. The steering wheel is very hot. Sure, I will deactivate the steering wheel heating. If you have live cockpit professional, you also get augmented reality for navigation. That means that the cameras record what's in front of you and then it can produce uh, guidance for where to turn, etc. directly on the image to help you guide with guidance. So now I'm getting closer to where I should turn in front of me here. And then I get some live indicators when and where I should turn in order to help me. Now we get to another turn and uh, once again the car indicates in good advance where to go in order to help me. And it also produces an arrow on the road to help me. And the same goes for circulation places, it also indicates where to go. And informs you when to exit from the circulation place. I have the driving assistant professional and then I have of course the adaptive cruise control. But uh, you also have a lot of other functions and different settings you can use. So uh, first of all you also have driver assistance which means that uh, the car not only adjusts the distance to the car in front of you on, and the speed but it also adjusts the steering according to the road. And uh, then there are functions for this so you can decide how fast you want to go into corners and circulation places because uh, the car reduces the speed automatically when you enter a corner or a circulation place or a junction or something. And uh, then you can set this under speed limit assistant. Uh, first of all you can decide how you want the speed limits to adjust. Uh, automatically the car reads the sign and then it sets automatic the, the speed of the sign. And manually you decide yourself what you want to have. And anticipation you get a suggestion from the signs and then you can accept this with the set button on the steering wheel. And I normally have it automatically. But then there's a very good function in many BMWs that you can adjust the speed limit so you don't need to go exactly what the sign says. So here I can adjust speed limits and uh, for instance I have it set to plus 5 kilometers. So if the sign says 100 kilometers my car will set the speed to 105. And then you have a different setting up to 60 kilometers where you can use, there I normally have it on zero because uh, the, 
speed tickets are much uh, more dangerous when you are at low speeds and also you want to keep the speed uh, more securely when you enter a school or something. Then you have this function I explained earlier, the root and junction assistant, which adjusts the speed uh, when you enter a junction or a turn or something. First of all, you have to enable it by enter this selection, automatically adjust speed to root. But then you have a function where you can decide how fast you want to go in the corners or circulation places. You can set it in three different levels and I normally have it to fast. Then you also have different settings for the distance control. You can set the preferred distance by yourself in different levels. But you can also use this one, situational distance control. This means that the car ad adjust the distance to the car in front of you adaptive and uh, takes in consideration what the speed is, what the driving circumstances, weather and etc. And this works very good so I normally always use this one. And if you don't want to use the adaptive cruise control or you just want to use a normal uh, cruise control then you can use this one and switch it and then it, it doesn't use any distance control at all. So you have a lot of functions to set it up the way you want to have it. When you have the lane changed warning you get a uh, warning in the mirror when it's safe or not safe to change lane and it works on both sides. If you have the external mirrors that are automatically dimmable they are also automatically foldable and there's also light in the bottom part of each um, mirror so when you open the car it lights up the area in front of the door with the BMW light carpet. And that works really nice. You can see if there's uh, some water or something else when you step into the car. I also have the head-up display which can display a lot of information for you. Of course the sign and your actual speed but also if you use navigation it can uh, show the next turn and etc that you have to do. So all in one a uh, very good system, very clear view but uh, very hard to record so but you get a picture of it you can also adjust the interior lightning in several ways and to do that you go in under settings interior lightning and then you have the option if you want to turn off or on the ambient lightning and the ambient lightning are the light strips here it's the light in the roof down here in the center console etc and in the floor so you can turn it off if you want to and then you can turn it on and then you have different settings you can adjust the, the how much you want it to how strong it should be individually you have the background lightning here which is center console roof uh, floor you can set it to different levels and then you have the accent lighting which are the light strips in the front and in the doors so you can set that level also individually you can have it reduced during night time or you can have the the same strength all the time but normally you want to have it reduced for night time and then of course you can change the color uh, I have normally indigo, which I think uh, looks great together with the blue stitching and uh, the blue interior theme of BMW i. But if you want to, you can choose something else like orange. You can go for 
green, maybe white. You have several different options uh, according to your taste. And uh, then you have also some lightning events that you can have. So that you can have different lights when the car welcomes you for safety and warnings, when you lock or unlock the car, when uh, the car uh, gets a call on the telephone. And if you have the Harman Kardon sound system, you also have lights in the speakers. But uh, that only starts when there's sound. So if I turn on the sound system, the Harman Kardon logo lights up in the speaker grill. And if I turn off the music, it turns off. So a lot of alternatives to adjust it according to your own taste. You also have uh, separate settings for the display. One for the where you have the driving speed and one for the media panel. And to adjust that you go into displays and then you can set a separate brightness for the control display which is the one in the middle which I'm using now. And then you can go here, cockpit brightness at night. This is the overall brightness of all the panels together. I hope you got some useful information out of this. And uh, if you have some questions or if you want to see some more functions explained, please leave a comment. And if you like what you've seen, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, remember to subscribe so you don't miss the coming videos and uh, drive safely.